GameSpot Stage 1 E3 show continues with Need for Speed Rivals. Joining me, Craig Sullivan, the creative director on the game from Ghost Studios. Craig, welcome to the stage. To me with the big microphone. Up. I know, you want one of these things. They're sexy, I can't blame you, but uh, we, we're having a little audio issues. I, I blame the other people that aren't us. Blame the sh it's crazy. E3! Uh, but we can hear you fine now, and we're talking about Need for Speed Rivals. You guys had a pretty uh, explosive showing yesterday during the press conferences. Yep. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we sat here this time last year. I don't know. I still can't hear you through there. She just d double fist microphones. Audio. Here we go, Craig. This one's gonna work out. What do we got? Can I hear you now? <laughs> Hello. Something's working. Oh, there we are. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Good, good, good. All right, Craig. So you were saying, uh, last year we were talking Need for Speed, Most Wanted with Criterion. Now you're over at Ghost. Yeah, so I'm still, you know, I'm kind of on secondment, which is meaning, you know, I'm on loan to Ghost. So I'm the creative director over, over at Ghost at the moment. And, um, you know, Ghost is a new studio based in Gothenburg over in Sweden. Um, and I work with my good friend Marcus Nilsson, who's the executive producer there. And um, he was originally at DICE, which is in Stockholm in Sweden. So we have a lot of uh, really good heritage over there. And we um, pretty much hand built a, a team from all around the world to create a really really amazing need to speed experience and that's what rivals is so it's kind of you know it's very cool it's very fresh it's very new um, you know we had a lot of people think that it was criterion making need to speed rivals but you know i guess that's a that's a compliment right because another team's doing it but it's really good so um it, it's it's just good and it's good you know i mean it's up on the screen now we, we had a we had a great uh, press uh, conference oh yeah and i remember this scene from the the press conference yesterday what struck me is just the the environmental effects that are going on here the rain and the way that it and the winds the way it just felt like it was really the weather was a real factor yeah and um, we're on frostbite 3 so everybody's seen battlefield looks amazing you know and they have um, lots of particle effects we can use. The Frostbite 3 engine allows us to do huge vistas, cool water, cool rain effects. I mean, uh, art director David Taylor said he wanted to be, uh, the art direction for the game to be based on a force of nature. So, you know, I've played quite a lot of driving games where I'm driving around and it's a nice sunny day like it is out in LA now and it's taking a trip to the beach and it's stuff but you know the hardest driving conditions are when it's a bit you know a bit rainy a bit uh, a bit stormy and there's kind of you know particles and stuff flying around so we thought that'd be pretty cool we could really realize the visuals of that on next gen so um, you know we went for it and I think you know people reacted to that really well at the press conference they certainly did we actually you basically just answered a question from Robin on Twitter about weather cycles and uh, hello Robin on Twitter also curious about day night cycles and you know rivals racing at night it seems like a good time for street racers yeah we have a full day night cycle in the game um, it just so happens we're showing like sunsets at the moment or you know kind of late evening but um, we have a full weather setup around uh, the, the game setup in Redview County uh, which is a, a full open world which is um, you know bigger than bigger than most wanted and bigger than um, Hot Pursuit and two previous Need for Speed games so it's a really huge road network we have everything from sunny mountains to the stormy forest the rain we have sandy deserts we have more rural kind of open plains. We have everything that's designed for driving your car really as fast as you can. Did you get to go to all those environments to help uh, scout them out and uh, send you down to Morocco or something? Uh, <laughs> where, where was that? I've, I've never heard of that place. Um, it's it's loosely based on kind of Californian, right? So, you know, we did, you know, PCH, you know, I've driven a couple of times. And oh, kind man, of, that's um, quite a road. You know, and yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's not really based on a real place, but it's, yeah, uh, sorry, it's not set in a real place, but it's based on those kind of feelings. It's evocative for those places, yeah. yeah. Evocative, uh, good word, I like yeah. that. Yeah, we like the vocab here at GameSpot. <laughs> Zonehammer from the Twitch chat is curious about, uh, you know, obviously this is a, a game that embraces multiplayer. Uh, will you be able to drop in and drop out of your friends' games? What? How does that sort of connectivity work? Yeah, so the big, 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 big. It's pretty big. The oh, big feature for us. Um, you know, it's it's... We talked a lot at the press conference and tried to show it in a, in a, in a very limited uh, time 
this uh, new system, revolutionary new system we're bringing to Need for Speed called All Drive, right? All Drive destroys the line between single player and multiplayer. So you can be, you, you get home from work, you know, you love playing games, you're gonna go and play uh, Need for Speed Rivals. You start playing as a racer, you'll be driving around in the world, you can pull up to an event start and press the button to start that in a completely new way than you have done before. And as you're racing through the world, I can come into your game, cop comes around the corner, you know, you can see my gamer tag, you can see that it's me, and I, you're playing through your single player experience, your single player experience, through your, through your single player progression as either a cop or a racer, and I'm playing through my cop progression, my single player experience, but we're playing them in the world at exactly the same time. And when those experiences merge together, that's something that you've never played before, right? There are no lobbies or anything in this game. This is not a boot up the multiplayer, wait in a lobby, let's go. This is you start playing, I start playing, I can choose to help or hinder you based on whether or not I'm a cop or a racer. And, you know, for, for players who maybe, you know, don't want a buddy s screaming in off a side street and shunting them off to the side, yes. can, can you choose to just, like, have your own little racing experience? Yes, you can. I mean, you know, it's we're a big believer in choice, right? So the, the, I think the default setting of the game is going to be open to your friends. Uh -huh. But if you want to, you can go in, you know. Maybe if you don't have any friends, you know, I'm sure you had loads. But, uh, so many. You know, yeah, just if, all, if, yeah, if, all of them. <laughs> If you want to go in and play solo, you can do that, absolutely. All right, that's cool. Uh, we are getting some questions here uh, about car customization and the, the, the breadth of cars that you guys have in here. I mean, what what is the, put it on the timeline of like, you know, supercars or F1, like put it, put the, the, the car roster of Need for Speed Most Want, uh, Rivals so, in context for folks. Okay, so first thing for us, big news for Need for Speed is that um, Ferrari's back. So Ferrari hasn't yes. been in Need for Speed for seven years, I think it is, so that was a big deal for us. So the, the car you get to drive at the demo at the show floor is a uh, Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. Amazing car, sounds amazing, drives really well. Um, there are other Ferraris in the game. Um, there's, we're kind of going for the more, you know, super exotic. Uh, Check. It just went out. Oh, there you're back. Hey. It's okay. You were saying uh, super exotic? Super exotic. <laughs> so we have, you know, in in the uh, software we brought with us, you can play, you know, Lamborghini Aventador, uh, Porsche GT3. Um, we have the, uh, the Koenigsegg Agera R. You can actually play as a cop. Um, so they're really kind of cars that go between 150 and 200 miles, no, 250 miles an hour really quite comfortably, because this game's all about, you know, the clues in the name, need for speed, yep. they go really fast. You are not going 75 miles an hour. No, you're not cruising around in some of these, uh, you know, SUVs and some of these taxis I see driving around in LA. It's basically all, you know, super shiny, super cool cars that are really aspirational. That's pretty fun, and we've seen a fair amount of shiny cars from uh, the, the new console launch lineups. Uh, by the way, that demo we were just watching, what system was that running on? Uh, that was actually running on a, uh, on a PC. On a PC. Um, but we have, um, you know, we'll be launching the game on Xbox One and on PlayStation 4 later in the year. So, and they look pretty much the same as what you're seeing today. And yeah. they will only end up looking better. We still got a way to go. So we launched November 19th on okay. um, current gen. Um, on 360 and, and PS3 and also on PC and the game is only going to get better at the amount of time that we have left So it's going to look pretty good. That's pretty nice. You guys definitely putting a lot of love into this need for speed uh, Jimmins in the twitch chat is wondering about car tuning, you know, you, I've talked talked about the cars you can select but how can you customize your own car? So you can uh, you can personalize your car. You can choose the uh, different color of the rims, different color of the the paints. We have various decals that you can put on your car, so you can pretty much make it look how you want. Um, but also we have uh, for people who played um, uh, Most Wanted, we have modifications that you can add to your car, so you can tune your car to play in a certain way. You know, people we know people really like to do that, um, and we can also tune the uh, the pursuit tech that's added to your car. So it's not just about driving and doing bang bang with the cars right people who played hot pursuit you know we had everybody ended up calling them weapons they weren't really weapons like machine guns or lasers or missiles or any sure, of this stuff but, you know you talk about spike strips exactly or so you've slick. played this stuff yeah, yeah. so you know that spike strips emps the the police can call in um helicopters can call in roadblocks the racers can use jammers and EMPs and turbos, so we have that very finely crafted of what, are the, what is the best skill set to give to these guys to create the best race and chase situation. So we're going to bring back some of the old favorites from Hot Pursuit, but we're going to do some new stuff as well, you know, stuff that you could really only do with the power of these new machines and really kind of go to town on that. 
Well, speaking of the new machines, uh, people have been asking, uh, you know, generally, pretty regularly with any game that comes up here, about the new functionality that these new consoles are going to enable. Yes. And uh, one of the questions, the questions revolve around the, the share button or the video sharing. And it seems yeah. like rivals, you know, that moment where you overtake or where you cause your opponent to crash. I mean, you guys have already, the series has a history of already building in those dramatic camera moments of car flipping over, choo, 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 you got busted, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys doing building in some of that video sharing stuff as well? So the uh, the video sharing comes for free on the new machines, which is cool. Um, so it's just baked in there already. Yeah, so I mean, we're finding that um, it's almost like the, the, the stage presentation um, that we did yesterday, that because that has to be quite a controlled sequence, is almost, it's not as free-flowing as the stuff that we're showing at the live software, because when you've got, we've got six players up and running, you know, driving around with a load of AI driving around as well, the unexpected moments that happen because you're throwing those guys together yeah. is, we, 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 as games creators, we don't plan them, they just happen through free play, free play, so the ability to share those moments, which will be unique to every player, is great, right? It's not about us as game developers saying the only stuff that's interesting is when we choose to do a cutaway camera. Yeah. There's interesting stuff happening all the time and that, the video sharing and the ease at which that's available on the new machines is great. That's going to be a, a really cool way to, to let those sort of organic experiences come to light, you know, and, and maybe you guys will see some a thing or two that surprises you once it hits the store shelves. In every game I've ever worked on, we always see stuff that we never designed in. We, we, we always say we design for chaos, right? Yeah. So we design so the game won't break, uh -huh. but then what uh, what players do with it after that is completely up to them. So that's absolutely the game we're making. Design for chaos. It should say that on the back of your shirt there. I like that. You can, you can write it on later. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm just going to check here for one more question. Uh, of course, monitoring the GameSpot chat. I'm switching over to the Twitch chat as well where people are talking, but it's going to be Twitter where we grab our last question from, and the question comes from KSG Fluffy. Wondering about, back to those weather conditions and terrains, is picking the right car for the right situation going to be an important factor? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the vehicle choice will um, will ultimately dictate what you're going to do, right? So not, you can choose to play as a cop or you can choose to play as a racer, but we have um, heavier and lighter vehicles. So if you're going to go out in like a really high-end Ferrari, that's not going to do so well when it comes up against a heavy cop car, you know, so like a, you know, a Dodge Charger or something going up against that. So absolutely the vehicle choice, the way that different vehicles handle the different terrain, you know, um, because of the way that we're modeling the physics in the game, if a car's really low and it goes off-road, it's not going to, you know, it's going to bottom out and it's going to kind of not do so well. Whereas yeah. a, a car that's slightly higher, that's more, you know, built for kind of, you know, LA roads, bumpy, bumpy, bumpy on the freeway, they might be a bit better in certain situations. So it's absolutely down to, you know, having the right cars in the game and just allowing the players to choose as many as they want to when they want to. Well, right on. Uh, we've, Craig, we've got a lot more questions for Needs for Speed Rivals, but we're coming to the end of our time here. Uh, give us a rundown once more the next gen and current gen consoles the game's coming for and when folks can get it so it's uh need for speed rivals is out on november the 19th on playstation 3 xbox 360 and pc and then later in the year on these lovely next gen machines delightful craig sullivan thank you so thank much you. for coming on the show thanks all right folks up next we've got a look at the playstation 4 exclusive racer drive club but first it's over to the nintendo booth a giant ghostly enclosure on the other side of the hall over there to see what they have got in store over there.